Hello? Hey, how you doing, love, mama? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you might like to hear. Got Welcome back to the only channel that talks about movies. I'm Timbo, and today we're talking about Scream 6. Scream 6, as the title says, is the sixth entry in the Scream franchise. However, is a sequel to Scream 5. In this entry, we see our survivors living in the Big Apple, moving on from the tragedy they experienced in Woodsboro. However, the idea of ghost space is still alive and well, and we have someone under the mask again to stalk, harass, and kill our protagonists, as well as a slew of new and legacy characters. Going into this movie, I had already had some predictions on who I thought the ghost face killers were, as well as what I thought their motives were going to be which you can watch right here. But I also went into this movie with high expectations because I really enjoyed Scream 5. So going into this movie, I was ready for a roller coaster of excitement and thrills. And I got that and then some. I love that after all this time, after six movies, they still can have a cold open kill and it be new, innovative, and different. And the opening kill in this movie is very creative. And as always, Scream delivers by staying ahead on the curve and doing something you wouldn't have expected. The last movie focused heavily on the Stab franchise and ultimately ultimately became the motive for our killers. Where this one, I feel like they're really stepping back beyond the curtain and kind of focusing on the Scream franchise and going back and looking at those films. Obviously, you know, within the movie, these are actual crimes that actually happened in their hometown. This is really cool to me as it felt like they took what our characters were dealing with in Scream 5 and then they pulled that microscope back to let us have that same experience by seeing the old masks, all the kills and the props from those movies that came before. Ghostface is again voiced by Roger L. Jackson and in this movie I felt like he really just kicked it into overdrive and every, everything he was saying I felt like had conviction behind and that anger that he had delivered in previous films. So it, it felt like he was really invested in this film. And to match Roger's voice, we also had some very, pretty vicious stuntmen working underneath that Ghostface costume. It felt like I was watching an old Scream movie. I really enjoyed the kills in this movie. They were very gruesome and bloody. One kill they didn't show, though, is the shotgun kill scene that you, that's shown in the trailer. I would have loved to see this happen on screen. So I'm hoping maybe they'll have a deleted scene or a director's cut uh, that shows this shotgun scene. Um, I think it would have I think it would have matched the scene from Halloween 2018 where Michael steps on uh, the newer doctor's uh, face and just explodes. I would have loved to see a scene like that in this movie, but I'll ask, you know, it. Hopefully they'll have that happen and kind of show us that. Our survivors in this movie, otherwise known as the core four that they've self-proclaimed themselves, feel a lot closer in this movie than they did in the previous film. But to be fair, I probably would have not been really close to a lot of people in high school once I got out, unless I would have also went through a traumatic experience where uh, somebody that was close to knit into my friend group decided to throw on a mask, uh, find somebody on Reddit, also have them put on a mask and then try to um, continue a movie franchise by killing my friends. I think we would have a pretty strong bond after that. I mean, with Sam dealing with her dead father in her head, telling her to fulfill his legacy, Carol just wanting to move on from last year, and Chad and Mindy seemingly acting completely normal as if they did not have somebody in their life be killed within the past year. I mean, they all don't have just as much trauma. They probably all are in need of some uh, therapy. And then legacy characters. We have Kirby coming back. She's an FBI detective, which becomes very, she has a good reason why she's there. I mean, I, I would too would be interested if as an FBI agent, killers are starting to turn up again where I was from. I would be pretty interested in that. So seeing her in this film it makes sense. And it was, I thought it, it was worth, um, Having her in there. And then, of course, having Gail Weathers. I don't like that she wrote another book. Um, I think that's very, uh, I don't know, just not on brand considering that Dewey had just died a year ago. I don't think she, I don't think anybody would have wrote a book like that. But 
I mean, she, I'm glad that she's back. Cause obviously, she needs to be there. And then we also have some new characters. We have Detective Bailey, the in, the New York City police officer. We have his daughter, Quinn. We have their buddy, Ethan. And we have Mindy's girlfriend, Anika. Everybody did an awesome job in this movie, uh, especially, you know, returning characters, legacy characters, new characters. Uh, they all played their part really well. Some points that I have on this movie that call for criticism, I think heavily just rely on specifics. First, we have some scenes in this movie where people that have been hurt by Ghostface are either seen moving without any pain or are still alive somehow. I'm not going to go into specifics on why or who or how, because obviously I don't want to spoil the movie or anything like that. But it blew me away that someone could survive some of these attacks, some of these stabs that happen. And they're just so brutal. It, it was just, it kind of like blew me back a little bit to think like, there's no way this person could move around and just be fine. I mean, this is almost like Fast and the Furious levels of like believability, folks. Then on top of that, we have people in this movie that are like not, they're not, Feel, they don't act like they have just lost somebody. And some of them don't even act like they lost somebody 30 minutes ago. I'm talking to you, Mindy. And lastly, we have to address that Neve Campbell's not in this movie. They did a great job explaining why she's not in it. And realistically, I don't see where she would have fit into this movie. But the fact that Paramount would not pay her for what she deserves is ridiculous. Without her, the Scream franchise would not be what it is. She is one of the best protagonists in any of these horror franchises that came of the, out of that time or any time. I think just some of these complaints that I have were easy fixes that the producers and creators of this movie could have addressed. And I just think it was kind of, you know, unnecessary things that could have been fixed. But overall, this is probably one of my favorite screams in the franchise because they were able to take the story out of Woodsboro and make the idea of Ghostface make sense in a bigger city like New York City, and amplify it into something greater. I'm very interested to see what they're going to do with Scream 7. I know they've just greenlit Scream 7, so they're already going to probably start recording any any time now. So I'm interested to see if this will be like a trilogy where they'll stop or if they're going to continue to follow what Fast and the Furious did and eventually get Ghostface in space. Now let me know what you thought about Scream 6. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Put it in the comments. Also, while you're there, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and help my channel grow. And if you liked what you saw here, click this video right here. You can watch my review on Cocaine Bear. And as always, I'm Timbo, and I just talked about that. Peace.